important if we're talking about um, data quality. Um, we are talking about um, taming ambiguities. And me, we try to tame the ambiguities. And we want to share just um, some ideas how to deal with doubts in archaeological data sets using the open data. Um, yeah. If we look in archaeological research and linked open data, we see that it deals with doubts and ambiguities which have to be tamed somehow. And uh, if you look at a small example, um, language often causes ambiguities. If we just have the stupid string lines, yeah, um, there is a question if we just mean the fruit or the Rome defensive wall. If we just have some kind of context, like some images, it's really um, easy to Choose, but if not, what will you do? So, and uh, if you have some doubts, there, there is some special thing. There were two kinds of doubts there were uh, vagueness and uncertainty. But what are both? So, if something is vague, for example, limes are sour, it's something that the statement is not really precise and it allows for some individual scale. And then you have the uncertainty, so for example, Lily eats limes, and in this uh, case, this statement, or the correctness of the statement, is not really known, because, it's, because it could be only true or false. So, we have to deal with both types of doubts. Um, and if we try to create some repro reproducible data for re reuse and just guaranteeing data quality in archaeological linked open data, it means that we have to disclosure all the doubts also in the linked open data. Um, this is not really a new <laughs> idea. Um, just our session chairs uh, presented a paper at the CAA 2014 with the, the title Uncertainty Handling for Ancient Coinage. And the, this was just some kind of um, first idea for our paper we will present here. So it's nothing really new, but with some new ideas and new methods. Um, on linked open data, we often use some um, authoritative repositories like control for capillaries and some called controlled resources uh, just to create an undoubted uh, anchor in the linked open data cloud. But it is, is it really undoubted? don't know it, and just to enable the usage of this resource as some central node in the internet. But uh, the link on data cloud is full of this so-called controlled resources, which in fact rapidly run out of control sometimes. Because each research collection, such as Soros uh, and so on, is cooking its own soup, related on its own research context, so everything, yeah, it's just uh, it's just spread it everywhere on the internet. And archaeological items are somehow related to some generic instances in the linked open data cloud based on their object oriented nature. So that means that these relations are described by modeled archaeological assumptions. And this causes ambiguities which, which have to be tamed to guarantee the data quality for reuse. And to make this a bit more um, up to you, I will show some examples uh, we find out in our IGZM databases and he will uh, go on. So one of the uh, main core architecture elements of the IT in the system is that we have already, since more than 20 years, we call Fachdatenbanke, so specialized databases hanging around, and uh, there is actually no central index on it. And so, by starting building this kind of instruments, uh, you run immediately into the problems of reliable data, how to link up, the quality of the linkage. And as you see, we, we, uh, we, we are working on this, but we are at the same time then 
confronted with the ambiguities in our own uh, existing database. So we have a set of databases of uh, about ship archaeology, now is one to three. So first one is uh, with wooden ship wrecks, second is depictions of ships on monuments, mosaics, what's happened. Three is a collection of coins with ship depictions. So because it, they, these express enough is one, two, three. They all on the net. And yeah, trying to map uh, pot fragments of Golis Hegelada, this is another big database, 250,000 uh, potter stamps. That uh, is a problem because in every museum archive you will find a series of uh, base rings of this Secretaria Sigillata, and aligning these uh, two typologies uh, ends up in modeling a just doubtful assumption, which is, of course, in the nature of a broken pot. Yeah? So, occasionally, but because the, the the so-called terra sigillata was made in a standardized way. And this is a nice co uh, contradiction, so to say, that already in antiquity stuff was standardized, uh, coins in a certain way also. So there was a concept in antiquity of standardizing. And if you're dealing with rings, you find a piece of ring in, in your museum cellar, uh, there is not much doubt as to which uh, service so they were like the Mycena porcelain, uh, there were services and they were standardized. So the attribution to a service is usually somewhat beyond doubt. But uh, the bottom of a pot where there's a ring, a base ring, yeah, that is a, a, bi a much bigger problem because the, the base rings are identical, but they can be attri attributed to different form types. Yeah. So there is a, and in this case there are sort of four possibilities that depends on uh, which form they are, are made on. So there is a, coins are usually complete or readable or whatever, yeah? and, and these, these are uh, unreadable uh, documents if, if you would like to express it like that. And what the people in the classical RDMS world are doing then is uh, OR. Yeah? Uh, so this is uh, type 15 OR, 17 OR, uh, 19, whatever. It uh, doesn't matter. Um, but uh, we do not want to uh, develop a graph uh, database, whatever, for every tiny problem we need in a cellar. Yes? It's just as an example that sometimes you really can solve these things also by just common uh, sense uh, handling. If you solve these kind of problems by uh, what a, a color ruler, which I, I got the idea actually from when you enter your password somewhere and it's indicated the password is re very reliable, less reliable, and depends on the color uh, what it is saying. So you can do this kind of very simple tricks dealing with uncertainty yeah, or is this one of the four possible options and uh, because in the background is straight calculated what is the percentage of this particular option of form what is it 33 what, how much of this is already there among the 250,000 pots recorded so the likelihood that this is form 33 is pretty uh, large. So for quite a lot of things you do not really do extensive modeling, but the things are getting complicated in the co coin world if you go to the outside world. Of course, in the uh, SCOS uh, linkage you would say uh, is exact match, this is Nero, yes this is Nero. Yeah, there is no doubt about this statement. But uh, it gets more complicated if we go to the ships where uh, we, there is a, a, a ship depicted on this coin. And uh, when you talk about the propulsion of the ship on the coin, uh, there is a yeah, deliberately cost, uh, yeah, diffuse usage. And uh, if you look at the parallels, then it isn't really clear whether this type of ship is being 
sailed or not, because there are, both are depicted uh, in other, uh, on other monuments. So here we would say, okay, there's a 50-50 chance of that this is a, a galera with a, a sail or, or not having a sail, which can be modeled according to a related mesh in its cost. Things are getting more rocky when um, we are trying to describe, describe the sailing gear on a relief using the SCOS ontology that uh, a triangular latin sail uh, used as a force sail because it, it's a triangular sail de being depicted yeah? can, can that be true? or is it actually a square force sail that is yeah, just being housed yeah? so here we would say uh, the likelihood that this is a, a, a real force sail but this is unluckily depicted as a triangle so is we say 99% likely but there is still the option that it is, could be still one the single occurring Latin seal uh, being used as a force even more problematic is the description of uh, monuments this is a sort of Neumagener wine ship the function of this ship is actually totally vague. Yeah. Um, you see, this is a principally a military ship, but they are uh, carrying wine barrels. Uh, uh, is this a commercial transport ship, or is it a, a military ship being borrowed for uh, uh, transporting the wine and going off to the party? But there are also very few people on board of the ship. So doesn't match with the number of rows. Yeah. So this is sort of the end of where <coughs> you can do really some meaningful statements uh, about uh, how this is uh, related to a uh, transport vessel or military vessel. There is a sort of reasoning behind it that because there are so many rows there, yeah, it uh, doesn't look that uh, a merchant was on his way with uh, 40 people rowing for transporting for wine barrels so the likelihood that this is a military vessel is uh, a bit better but things are getting ugly when we look at uh, ship depiction of uh, a real Latin uh, sail yeah and this is uh, not, not clear what, what this is. What, what this is. If you try to link this up into the Getty uh, art and architecture thesaurus, is what the word is like. Okay, you can get uh, a linkage into the expression. This is a sail. Yeah, but uh, we have a Latin sail, which is actually a very precious uh, documentation of this uh, propulsion technique. But linking into other um, uh, resources like the English Heritage Maritime craft types uh, leads into sort of nothing. Uh, this escort vessel corvette. So, yeah. So we cannot do real statement about the proportion of how reliable are these statements, either to Vasquetti or to uh, English Heritage. There is some waiting in it that we cannot really precise in this. Well, and this is where Florian. Pick the thing up and uh, can continue. Yes, so now it will be a, a bit more technical. Um, or maybe, yeah, we will see. Um, to solve all these problems, um, or some of these problems um, Alad mentioned, um, we just try to uh, yeah, find some solution to do that. And uh, in some uh, other things, uh, a former colleague of mine, uh, it's Martin Unholt, just um, invented something called AMT. And he, he have done that because he, uh, he is doing his PhD in mathematics and computer sciences on this topic. Um, so, um, and we just try to use 
all these ideas for solving these problems. Because this AMT provides a web-based uh, web based functions for modeling the and linked open data and including also some reasoning. Um, so the main idea behind all that I will uh, tell you in the next minutes is to map some depictions to define concepts and aligning them to authoritative thesauri to obtain uh, additional information in the end. And this could be done with some percentages, some kind of um, degree of doubt um, as uh, Alat already mentioned. So in this AMT, AMT ontology, there are different type of things. For example, some concepts, and we have uh, one concept, it's an object or a coin. And another concept is a keyword, this is this thing in our central meter index. And we have uh, some other concept, something like in the English heritage or in the getting 80 or whatever. And we have some kind of roles. So for example, a coin has a depiction and this keyword matches with something in another thesaurus and uh, this thesaurus has also some hierarchy um, relations and we have some uh, um, degree of um, dot you can use so this amt thing um, provides um, reasoning rules for uh, various axioms and logics to get a deeper insight into the resulting knowledge graph in the end. I don't know if you can read it, but uh, for example, if a coin has this depiction um, and it's, um, um, and it points on some keyword and this keyword points in a thesaurus, then you might say, okay, then this coin is also connected to this um, element in, this, in the thesaurus. And there are also some other things we just modeled and just try to uh, generate new information if we just link it into the cloud. Um, and all these rules can be formulated in RDF using a special uh, specific ontology and this is based on a, a AMT ontology which is also available in the net. Um, so we are talking about linked open data, so about triple structures. Um, but uh, all these uh, relations between our objects, keywords and concepts can be in the end exported um, as triples, but we have so the weighted edge, so it's more a quad in the end, uh, here uh, solved with, with an empty node. Yeah, so, um, but you can all uh, export everything just at quadruples in the end. Um, and some examples for this AMT reasoning, example for the question, is it a military vessel or not, um, can be visualized, visualized on the web. And if you just see the red um, um, numbers, the, there's the result of the reasoning this tool does. If you want to check, uh, um, check it out, just uh, click on, or just um, call this link, and you will see some really cool examples uh, working there. In the end, all these resulting uh, knowledge graphs are download downloadable in different formats, for example, uh, RDF, JSON, CSV, or Cypher, if, if you want to use a really, uh, yeah, a really graph database like Neo4j and so on. So just export it, put it in there, and do what you want. So, as some kind of conclusion, um, we think that modeling doubts in archaeological research using an ontology like MT may help to tame the, tame the ambiguities in linked open data. So in the end, we just don't want to say that this, what we have done here, is the correct way. We just want that uh, uncertainty and vagueness is in mind if we model something. And maybe it 